Well, hello there, Papper people. My name is Jason. I'm a registered polysomnographic technologist, otherwise known as a sleep tech. Today we are doing our final, I'm saying quote unquote, final review of the Somnix INAP, stands for Intermittent Negative Air Pressure Device. Now I say semi-final because I'm sure I'll revisit this at some point as more information comes out. But for right now, this is the information that I've gathered and I'm highly excited to share it with you today. We're gonna semi rip right into this. I'm gonna to try to be as concise as possible. Not much joshing around, if you know what I mean. First, I wanna say a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. You guys have no idea how helpful you guys have been lately. I especially appreciate all the new members that have just joined up in the last week or so. You guys all get a big thanks, buddy. Some of you may not have seen any of my videos prior to this one. So I'm gonna give you a very, very quick overview of what this thing is all about. Intermittent negative air pressure. Let's look at this thing first. First thing, we have the mouthpiece. We have the hose. We have this top piece here. This is actually like a portable spittoon. This thing is where everything is getting sucked into, including your spit. Now, typically you have a dry pad in here. The dry pad catches all the saliva and moisture that's being sucked out of your mouth. If that happens, then this is the main device itself. So really pretty small. Now this is all battery operated. It'll get about what they estimate seven nights on it. I used it for six nights and then I stopped using it and the battery power was perfect. That's pretty much it. There's not much else to it. All right, let me show you exactly how this thing works and then we'll get into discussing it. So this little flap here, I'm gonna stick my tongue behind it and all of this is gonna go behind my lips in front of my teeth. That's about it. I turn it on and I have to assist it in suctioning my mouth closed. What it's gonna do, it's gonna pull all my soft tissue, so my soft palate, my uvula, and my tongue. It's gonna pull all of that forward as it sucks the air out of my mouth, basically vacuum sealing it. Now, what exactly is it doing during that period? This is a pretty poor example of it, but it kind of gives you the gist. Look at my uvula, the soft palate in the back of my throat. I'll do it relaxed and I'll do it while I'm lifting it up. So that's not at all, <laughs> that's not at all what's happening inside there. It's actually the reverse effect. Now in my goofy demo, I took this piece here, I took the soft palate and I lifted it up. What it actually does is it, pulls it down, creating a lot of space in this airway for breathing. All of the air in my oral cavity is being sealed off. My tongue, my soft palate, my uvula are all being pulled forward. And as they're being pulled forward, my entire upper airway in the back is opening up. It's all pulling forward, opening everything up. And if I can breathe through my nose well, which I can, it really feels easy to breathe. Essentially, that's how the INAP works. Now I'll get into the cleaning in separate videos, but in general, you rinse the mouthpiece off with cold water, you run cold water through the tube, you pull out the dry pack in here that's caught all your spit, you throw that away, you're gonna use a new one for the next night. You can rinse out the little spittoon basin, and if you need to, you can go ahead and plug this in and recharge the INAP for the next night. And that is a day in the life of an INAPper. Now I wanna discuss some other things. We have a list of pros, I have a list of cons, and then I have some things that I would consider other considerations. A lot of them kind of overlap. I'm sorry if I get these out of order, but I welcome you, the community. I also welcome the INAP people to make comments, make clarifications, correct things I say if I said them wrong. I'm gonna try to present this as factually as I can. I will definitely also be interjecting some of my opinion into this. Here we go, I'm gonna start off with the negatives. Okay, the cons. <laughs> the cons as most people see this is the cost. That there's no lie. People don't like the cost of CPAP, they're not gonna like the cost of this. It's not free, therefore we don't like it. 
But what it costs basically is $1,000 if you wanna buy it outright. There's also an option where you can do for 84 bucks a month for two years, they'll give it to you. It's almost like a rental. With that 84 bucks a month for the first 24 months, you get periodic new dry pads, you get new tubing, and you get a new mouthpiece. Those come quarterly. They also have an option where if you decide you really like it, after four months, you can just go ahead and buy it outright. Therefore, you're not making any payments anymore. After the first two years, if you decide to continue with that rental route, it'll at that point cost you $29 a month for resupplies and to continue renting the iNAP device. Other negatives, this is not gonna help you if you have central sleep apnea at all. This is only for every form of obstructive sleep apnea. This, if you have obstructive sleep apnea, if you have hypopneas, if you have arrhea's. So obstructive apnea being when you completely stop breathing because of an obstruction, a hypopnea being where you slightly stop breathing because of an obstruction, <laughs> and arrhea being a respiratory effort related arousal, very similar to a hypopnea, just think of it as the same, and even snoring. Now this is also not intended for people under 21. It's for those of you 21 and older. Now this is also not gonna work for people who have things like chronic congestion or a permanent blockage in their nose. This is gonna be things like a deviated septum, nasal polyps, think things like that. More negatives. This is gonna require a prescription from a physician and this is also gonna require follow-up from a physician. Now we all know with CPAP, follow-up is crap. I don't expect it to be any better with the INAP device. This isn't a knock on the INAP, it's just a knock on the system that the INAP is in. So if you're expecting better follow-up, good luck with that. Now in my opinion, the, the app for this, the INAP app is horrible. There's really no useful information in here. Uh, all it'll tell you is total usage time, which you know by looking at your clock. The other thing it's gonna tell you is seal rate. Think of the seal rate as leak data if you're using CPAP. Leak is the devil, the seal is the devil with the INAP. If you don't have a good seal, it's all bad. And what I mean by seal is the seal time, If when it's suctioning everything forward and you get that nice tight vacuum seal, you can feel everything being pulled forward. If for some reason you open your mouth or the back of your airway, you do something a little funky and it breaks the seal, you're gonna feel like you've been turned into one of those pool suction machines. It's very loud, it's very obvious, and it's like a You know when you lost suction. It happened to me several times. You don't need an app to tell you that. And overall, it gives you just a big percentage. Now, a member of the Somnics team told me that there is granular data that only the physician has access to. Now, I know members of the community, like the online CPAP community, that's not gonna fly with you guys. You guys want to see the data. You guys wanna have access to it. I'm 100% with you. They're not allowing it. I would love to know the reasoning behind that, but that's just the way it is at this point. I don't think that seal is going to be as important as leak with CPAP because it's much easier to maintain a seal with this. It's suctioning everything forward. It's actually, in my opinion, quite easy to hold a seal when compared to CPAP. I have a very difficult time preventing mouth leak if I don't do something like tape. I didn't have to do that with the INAP device. It just stayed sealed. My bad, I got into a pro there. Back to the negatives. Another negative at this point in going through all the clinical data, all of the tests that have been done, there's not a lot known about who this is gonna work for. I have my hunches, but as of right now, it's listed as this is great for mild, moderate, severe patients. In all of the literature I found, it was actually very similar to things like oral appliances, well, really anything other than CPAP. So we have oral appliances, we have UPPP surgeries, we have the Inspire device, things of that nature. Most of those are, if we take the AHI and we cut it in half, that was a significant change and therefore it's a success. I don't look at it that way. I look at it as we need to get that AHI as close to zero as possible and the closer we can get it to zero, the better off we are, you're gonna be sleeping better. That is definitely a clinical or a significant difference. It's just in terms of sleep consolidation, it's, it's not good enough, in my opinion. All right, let's get into the pros. I've bashed this thing enough. Poor thing, we gotta, we gotta give us some love. I'm, I'm sorry, I nap. I'm sorry. Let's talk nice about you now. You ready for some compliments? Okay, number one thing is that I love about it, and this is a whole reason I tested it to begin with, I've looked at so many other devices. The INAP is the only device that you can look at and you just think about how is this gonna work? Will it work? Most of the others you're like, uh, no, not gonna work. 
Think of things like the air ring that never even came to fruition. Uh, is it okay to say you're welcome? The Inspire device, I mean, that just sounds like a bad idea from the start. This thing conceptually, I think of it, and it sounds like it'll work. Some positives about the iNap. There is no headgear, none at all. There's only one CPAP interface that works that has no headgear, and that is the Bleep Dreamway mask. Other than that, there's nothing else. INAP is the only other thing that has no headgear. The mouthpiece feels like it's actually part of your mouth. It blends in seamlessly. You don't feel like you have any bulky mouthpiece in there. It feels very, very natural to have it in your mouth. That sounds sturdy. The INAP is a non-surgical option. There's other surgeries such as the MMA, which is just, which is the maxillomandibular advancement. Think breaking all of these bones in here and pulling them forward. That's the MMA. You can even argue for the effectiveness of that. But basically the INAP is gonna do that non-surgically. It's gonna pull all that soft tissue forward, creating a bigger space for you to breathe. Now I'm questioning if you have a prescription, will your health savings account reimburse you for the cost? I'm thinking it will if you have a prescription from your doctor. So maybe that offsets the cost, but that's a decision that you have to make for yourself. Another one, the INAP is extremely easy to clean. Very easy, doesn't take much time at all. There's also no need for humidification with this like you typically have to have with a CPAP device. Now, some of you maybe saw my video, I'll link to it below, but I found in my own personal testing that there definitely was an improvement in my sleep. I had a decrease in my apnea hypopnea index as well as my respiratory disturbance index. Now, what those are, it's a measure of how many times you wake up per hour of sleep from an apnea or a hypopnea. For example, if I have 10 apneas in one hour, I have an AHI of 10. Now an RDI is considering RIRAs. Now RIRAs are a lesser form. Think of it as a mini hypopnea. You're breathing shallows and it causes you to wake up. RDI is included in that as well. My RDI was also decreased. Now one thing that someone mentioned, it was actually one of my Patreon supporters. Thank you, Stuart Hetherington. He asked me, hey, what was your overall arousal index. I did not include that in it. Now, I've already done this in another video, but I'm gonna add a little bit to it. Uh, on the left-hand side, right here, we have the INAP night. Over here, we have the non-INAP night. With, without the INAP night, you can see AHI of 0.9, REM AHI of elevated at 2.8, RDI at 3.0, lowest SpO2, blood oxygen level is at 90. With the INAP, I improved to a 0.0 AHI, obviously 0.0 AHI in REM, the RDI decreased from three to two, and then my lowest blood oxygen was improved at 92%. What I missed is right here, my overall arousal index. Now, this is just all arousals. I had an arousal index of 5.0 without INAP. And then I had an arousal index of 2.9 with INAP, significantly decreased. And if we're just considering spontaneous arousals that don't have to do with anything other than I woke up for some unexplained reason, very curious. I had without INAP 36, this was cut in half with INAP to 18. Bottom line, I did not wake up as much with the INAP on. And last thing that is a huge plus to me, there is a 60 day evaluation period. You can try this thing out. And if you don't like it, after 60 days, no questions asked, you return the device and you're out no more. That's two months, you're out 168 bucks from my math. Unless I'm missing something, INAP people correct me if I'm wrong, but for 168 bucks, if you can try this thing out, that's a no brainer in my opinion. Okay, here are some considerations that I thought of. If you're someone who is thinking, I hate CPAP, I don't wanna use CPAP, it doesn't work, it's too much, I, uh, I can't do it, I wanna try an oral appliance. I wanna have my dentist make one up. Oral appliances tend to be upwards of $2,000, typically higher than that. Now those are usually only meant for people who have mild obstructive sleep apnea. If you can try the INAP device for easily half the price and you don't have to wear a retainer at night, that is a huge plus. Now oral appliances are typically called mandibular advancement devices where your jaw juts forward. That puts a tremendous amount of pressure on your temporal mandibular joint if you've ever had problems with this, it is extremely painful. So you can try an oral appliance, have that pulled forward, and now you have these massive TMJ problems. Your bite has completely changed for two to $3,000. You can try the INAP device, non-surgical, and you're not gonna have any pressure on your TMJ. And I also think it does a much better job at opening up the airway. A mandibular advancement device, all it does is it pulls your jaw forward, which really just pulls your tongue forward. Now your soft palate and uvula are still hanging there, 
creating all sorts of havoc. It cannot do that with the INAP device. Now I used a negative as the cost, but if you wanna compare that to CPAP, it's basically the same price as a CPAP, actually a little bit less. Anymore, a CPAP device is gonna cost you roughly $1,200, maybe around $1,000. You can get the INAP device for about the same. Another thing to consider is that with the battery life being about seven days, if this works for you, you can take this camping. You can use it on like traveling for work. It's not, it's definitely not as big as a CPAP device. It's very small. You can stick it in your pocket. So if it works for you, instead of going camping, having to buy some kind of a, a portable battery supply for $300, and then if you wanna get a DC converter, that's another 80, 50 to 80 bucks, you're out almost $400 and you still have to recharge this thing. And with the iNAP, that just gets rid of all of that. The amount of power it takes when you do recharge it is just minimal compared to what a CPAP device uses. One other thing I wanna mention is combination therapy. Now combination therapy is using basically two different modes of therapy at the same time. So if you're on a high CPAP pressure, I'm thinking about those of you who have upper airway resistance syndrome, really your apnea hypopnea index isn't all that high, but your RDI is high. I actually personally fall into that category, typically. I would love to see people trying that out with CPAP and with an INAP at the same time. One, the INAP is gonna minimize all mouth leaking, and then you're just gonna have the benefit of CPAP that can work at a much lower pressure to eliminate any further obstruction. Yeah, you have a lot of crap on at the same time, that is no doubt, but I'm curious if that would help those people. I really, my hunch is that it would, and once we get some numbers through people trying this, we'll be able to figure that out at a later time. Now, I think it's really important to look at some of the clinical data on this. They have them on their website. I'll post a link to them in the description box down below. But one article that I found there was called uh, <laughs> uh, Effectiveness Something 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 <laughs> Systemic Analysis. Anyway, it suggested that the AHI severity is not a predictor of effectiveness. However, patients with retropalatial collapse responded better to INAP. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, retropalatial collapse is basically everything I talked about. If your obstruction is found to be from your, uh, from your tongue, from your soft palate, from your uvula, all of that is con considered retropalatial collapse. That is the number one thing found in DICE procedures. And for those of you who don't know that, that is a drug-induced sleep endoscopy where they basically knock your happy ass out and they try to figure out exactly where the obstruction is that's causing your sleep apnea. So because of that, I would love to see the numbers of people using the INAP increase so we can really see who this is actually working for. I don't buy that this is good for severe, the severe population, but depending on what the obstruction is and where the obstruction is coming from, I can definitely see this as being a viable option for those of you who are not interested in using CPAP, but wanna try this device out. Okay, and then I have one last thought. This is my own personal opinion, and this doesn't sound nice, but the, uh, what we do on this channel is the truth. I try to do the truth as I see it, and here's the truth. You have people that are on CPAP and don't wanna do it, they wanna quit. Why do you wanna quit is the question. If you're a quitter by nature, you're not gonna do this either. This has a learning curve as well. The first few nights I did it, I drooled like crazy. The drool was to the point I almost wanted to quit. I truly wanted to quit. First hour, I was drooling like crazy. I got seven plus hours after that point, and it was fine. The next night, I got about three and a half hours. I took it off, I was drooling so much. It felt like I had a cold, that uncontrollable swallowing where I'm just like <laughs> It was really frustrating to me, and I kept waking up with a <laughs> It was horrible. The next night I did it, I had a little drool, but it went away. Basically, what I'm saying is if you're a quitter and you're not willing to push through, no matter what you're using, CPAP, INAP, whatever it is, you gotta push through, you gotta give it a shot. Sound good? That said, I've got nothing else to offer. Quick desperate plea, if you haven't yet, like the video and please subscribe to my channel if you would like to do so. I welcome all comments in this. I saw all kinds of comments. Uh, one person wrote, hey, that's not intermittent negative therapy, it's constant negative therapy. And you're right, it is, it's constant negative therapy. Once you reach a negative pressure, this thing basically shuts off and you still have the negative pressure in there. If that negativity decreases, it goes and it turns it back on. I'm definitely gonna have to do a follow-up video to this. I can already smell it. There's so much information. Like I said, I welcome comments. Please leave your comments. What do you think about this? What did I miss? 
people who are potential consumers of this product, the INAP people, I welcome all comments. In fact, I want your comments. Not only is it good for the algorithm, it's good for all of us to figure this thing out as it's coming out. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. One more video on this coming out about how to clean it. It's gonna be a quick, easy video. I didn't wanna include it with this because it's kind of dumb. Last thing, huge thank you to the folks who sell the INAP, people at Somnix. Thank you so much for providing me with the INAP device for testing. You guys were great to work with. You guys answered all of my questions. Hopefully I presented this in a fair way. Like I said, if I didn't, let me know in the comment section down below. I wanna get this right. Bottom line, is this effective? I'm not 100% sure who it's effective for. It felt effective for me with a 60 day evaluation period for everyone, you can see if it's effective for you as well. And if you want to know if it works for you, you can do some follow-up testing with axgsleepdiagnostics.com. Wink, wink, wink. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Wow, you've got yourself a stinky mask. Pick up some Mask Bright today. Thank you to all watching, but an extra thick thanks, buddy. To Patricia Espelong, Ray Troutman, Sarvesh Joshi, Stuart Hetherington, Matthew Lilly, Jason Georgiades, and Mona Swearingen. And thank you to my other level Patreon supporters as well as my YouTube members.